about halfway between Drake and Estes Park in Big Thompson Canyon. And what we want to look at here is this rubbly slope. And what's interesting about it is that it's the remains of a landslide. And a landslide is one type of mass wasting event where the entire slope has slid down in a very short time period, probably in a matter of minutes. What this slope used to look like was a treed slope like many others throughout Big Thompson Canyon. And most of these slopes are made of colluvium. And colluvium is a grab bag term for the loose boulders that slowly migrate downhill just through gravity acting on it or rain events that introduce some surface flow that further move material, material down the slope. Well, this landslide is fairly recent and it occurred in 2013 during the flooding events that year. And there was two things that happened during those heavy rains that led to the destabilization of this colluvium slope, thus turning it into a landslide. The first is the water level was very high because of those heavy rains. And so when we bring the Big Thompson Canyon River higher, it's then eroding at that base of that steep slope, thus removing the foot of that slope and removing the material that's holding up the rest of the slope. And second, the heavy rains then saturated that colluvium, that sediment that made up the slope. And when material gets very saturated, the class that make up that slope lose friction between each other, and then they can flow much like a fluid down the slope. And what's interesting is that you can also get rafts of material that don't totally break up. And you can see there's a couple of standing trees, and they're on rafts that probably slid a little bit, but didn't fully disaggregate or break apart during this landslide event. What I want you to look at is also the class and the material, this rubble, that makes up this landslide deposit. And think about how that material can be distinguished from, say, river deposits and moraine deposits. And we've talked about the characteristics of some of that material in other stops. Although colluvium is certainly a more complicated material than loose sand, owing to the mixture of grain sizes and vegetation growing on top, we'll use loose sand just as a simple model for some of the important processes that dictate the angle at which slopes can be stable. As you can see, as the sand piles up in certain locations, the sand gets steeper than what's called the angle of repose, and little avalanches are created, which then reduces the angle of the slope back to the angle of repose. The angle of repose being the angle of the slope that unconsolidated material can stay stable at. For this loose sand, it's about 30 degrees. As you can see, when the base of the cone that is at the angle of repose is removed, an avalanche behind is created because where the sand is removed, the angle of slope is much greater than the angle of repose. And so an avalanche is created, which reduces the angle of the slope to the angle of repose, where it is stable once again. During flooding in the Big Thompson Canyon, the floodwaters of the river remove the toe of the slope in a similar fashion, leading to the landslide. An additional complexity is the role of water, which at low amounts, water can in fact stick grains together, increasing the angle of repose. However, at high water concentrations, water acts as a lubricant and in fact decreases the angle of repose. And certainly in the heavy rains during the 2013 floods, there was enough water that slope stability would be decreased by the increased water content.